let's talk about Palace. <sighs> I usually don't like talking about Palace on here because I don't really have any great things to say about the brand because I had a very bad experience with one of the people that owns it back in the day that stung me until today which is why I never wear it ever again, which is really sad to be fair. It's really pathetic. It really is. I know it's pathetic. I know I should get over it, but I can't. I've got pride. I've got an ego and, you know, I'm thinking I'm bad and stuff. So, you know, in my head, I'm thinking at the moment, I should have fucking cracked a chair over his head. Like, I'm just, you know what I mean? You know, you're someone when you, when you replay parings, when you replay like situations that didn't go your way <laughs> and you start thinking oh, i should have done this i should have done that so i'm always thinking like violent thoughts whenever i think of palace i'm thinking fuck man i should have like i should have did a madness you know what i mean but i didn't because you know maybe because I'm, I'm not really built for it who fucking knows but but with that being said we have to or i have to acknowledge that this palace and vivian westwood collaboration is straight fire man <laughs> it's straight fire I'm still never going to wear the brand. You're never going to see me wear a single palace garment in my entire life. It's never happening. I'd rather die than wear another piece of palace again. But I can't deny this palace and Vivian Westwood collab is straight flames. Straight fucking flames. From the lookbook alone. The lookbook alone is just already a win. Like if you know the history of Vivian Westwood, RIP to the great one. If you know how big it was or how big it still is in places like Japan, if you know how influential and how important street style photos like this were in magazines like Fruits, Asayan, Boon, a few other ones I have here somewhere, you know what this means also, right? This sort of like street style, shop style um, thing that people would like myself would obsess over and be trying to break down outfits and find out where they purchase certain things and try and Google and buy stuff from proxy, da 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 da. This is just this already sent me when i saw this lookbook i was like oh man if only these guys weren't run by cunts if only they weren't fucking cunts that worked there or that owned it right if only they, if only these cunts did them big timey and shit and didn't make me feel like a peon in that very vulnerable moment i'd be on to it and before we actually continue just to put it on record by the way i i had a very brief interaction with one of the people that owns it right and it was so pathetic because in, you know, thinking back, it probably wasn't that big of a deal. But to me at the moment, it really was. So back in the day, I was working in this small Nike store called 1948 in Shoreditch. It was a very popular at the time, but it used to sell a lot of limited edition shoes and clothes and shit. And it was a small one, you know, whatever. So I worked there back in the day. And when I was working there back in the day, we had a lot of cool events. A lot of cool people would kind of pop through and walk through and shit, right? That's when I get I got to meet James Jebbia, the, the owner um, and founder of fucking Supreme and a few other bunch of people, right? Great stuff, amazing. And one day, one of the founders of Palace came through and this was early when they started their brand. Like I bought, I think I might have purchased the first two t-shirts Palace ever made. One, obviously the Trifeg that we all know. Um, and obviously um, when I bought that t-shirt, I think back then they were running this gimmick that they were being like you know indie and diy and they were basically buying a lot of t-shirts that already had prints on them turning them inside out and then popping their logo on it on something right i think that was a gimmick i forgot where it was so a lot of the t-shirts i had from palace were like printed inside out so you see the seam will be popping out so it was kind of you know kind of cool to have those first couple of ones and i was you know supporting a lot of those shirts and i think i might have bought those shirts i think i might have bought them from fucking slam city skates or something or i think i might have bought them hand in hand from someone from like sidewalk magazine if you know you know sidewalk magazine forum whatever i might have bought the first few ones so i had like five or six early early shirts back in the day and they weren't and back then there weren't that many people wearing palace it was like an up-and-coming brand right they were doing their thing but you know they weren't as popular as they are now and you wouldn't see that many people wearing it. So if you did see someone wearing them, it was like a head nod, like, oh, what one? So it's one day, I'm in, I'm in a shop, and I think I might have even had my white palace, you know, triangle fucking shirt on in the store. And then one of the founders comes in, I'm like, oh, shit. So I start geeking out. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much. Maybe I started glazing from the fucking till. Maybe I was already fucking doing the hand motions to suck the guy's dick or something. I don't know. But then he comes up to me and we start, and I, I think I try to engage a conversation. No, he doesn't come up to me. I think I try to engage a conversation. And I think the first thing I say is like, oh, are you going to start doing hats? Or something like that. I think it's something like that. Like, oh, are you going to start doing hats? And the response I got was so dismissive and cold and cunty. I was like, immediately in that moment, I was like, oh shit, I'm never buying something from you ever again. All I said is something about, oh, you're going to buy hats. Are you guys going to start making hats? And he was like, yeah 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 
Yeah, like just almost as if like I asked him to see his fucking I don't know. I asked, I asked if I could see his fucking bank balance or something. Or I asked him for his mother's maiden name or his pink card. I don't know. Something very intrusive completely dismissed me looked to me like i was shit on the bottom of his shoe and i remember the time thinking wow like how am i getting big time by this guy when your brand isn't even like popping yet it's at the infancy usually that kind of attitude happens when like you're really blowing up that's when you can you know you can kind of stun on people and act like a cunt and shit i was like how you act like a cunt and you just started <laughs> how you how, how are you already an asshole and you've only just started this brand was like maybe a year old maybe a year and a half old you know, they were, you know, I think at the time the the collective, the brand was Palace, and the little crew that they hang around with was PWBC. They all lived in one house together. That whole myth in it, and um, yeah, that one interaction, I've never worn the brand again. And from that moment, I never wore it again. I think I gave away some of my shirts to my brothers. Big up my brothers. I think I might have threw some away. Like I had quite a few. I think I think I, I had the original Chanel T-shirt. I had a, a Med, I think a Medusa one. I had a couple of the Palace Triangle ones, um, and that was it. And I think the, the the sad thing was, I think when I stopped wearing wearing it, it was when it really picked off. And I think as soon as I stopped wearing it, maybe it might have come a few a few years later. Uh, the only time I was kind of tempted to buy it again was when they dropped that original Adidas collaboration. I forgot the model of the shoe when they had this really nice shoe that they collaborated on, and I was like, oh, I should have bought that, but I couldn't. I just couldn't with consciousness give these guys money because of how dirty they did me in that one interaction and even to this day i remember thinking back to thinking this is just some like west london white boy like how the fuck are you letting him speak to you like this but in the moment i was in my fan mode you know i wasn't in like normal mode so that brain didn't react but nowadays i think to myself like fuck if that would have happened any other time it would have been a madness you know what i mean i would have probably <laughs> ended up in prison or something because you know i don't take well to like that type of disrespect unfortunately I probably should because it happens all the time in the industry in the scene you know people always act like dicks so if you go around beating up everybody that kind of gives you a weird look or says something mad to you you're gonna be end up beating up half of the world so i probably should just swallow it and take it and it's not that big of a deal and maybe as well i was being annoying who knows maybe i'm misremembering things maybe i did too much i don't know but i don't think so i think i just said hey you guys should make hats and this motherfucker looked at me like i was literal shit on his shoe literal shit on his shoe i remember thinking back like I should have fucking weighed this guy in, innit? I should have fucking hit him over the head with a fucking skateboard or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I should have just repeatedly just kept hitting his head with trucks until he just stopped breathing or something. Because that was just a mad thing. <laughs> but yeah, you know, that's what I get though. Because I was one of those people also that used to take the piss out of like people from West London. Like, you know, you know, I, you know, say certain things about West London people. So I think that was my karma. For being so disparaging to people that lived on the west side of london so um yeah man what can you do what can you do what can you do what's that there's a 10k hiss in the studio what do you mean 10k hiss what do you mean what's that hiss hiss what's going on with the hiss oh no hold on actually let me let me do this let me do this there's the hiss on there let me add something apologies i think i might have took away a fucking compressor let's do noise is it noise compressor noise suppression i think it's noise suppression let's do noise suppression let's do this hopefully this works uh bear me a second how is that is that pop is that better is that better yo big thoughts up, big up. on the current standing at burberry what's missing with daniel lee hashtag we miss virgil although yeah, pharrell exactly. killing it exactly ten dollars exactly. us for 10 seasons later with flats <laughs> yeah big up oh, is that better yeah cool 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 big up big up big up big up thank you to sarlux i appreciate you sarlux thank you you're a fucking legend thank you for that because i won't be going much longer on random show i can't be having you having fuzzy so thank you for pointing that out sarlux appreciate you big up richie richie says thoughts on the current standing at burberry what's missing with daniel lee we miss virgil hashtag i agree although for, i don't feel i think i don't think for us killing it mate i thought that one collection was good and apart from that's been shit the best thing he's done since then has been a Tyler Creative Capture Collection. I'd actually like Tyler to take over, uh, unpopular opinion. Um, and you said ten dollars for us, or ten dollars. <laughs> uh, ten, <laughs> ten summers of flats. Yeah, All right, cool. It's coming. It's coming. Um, but yeah, big up Richie. Big up Richie. Appreciate you. Yeah, we definitely miss Virgil, man. We miss Virgil more for the fashion content. That's what we miss Virgil for. We miss Virgil for the fashion content. Honestly, man. Like, we don't have anyone doing that anymore. He was so open. He was really open to, like, share the codes. Like, hey, here's me in the studio. 
here's me at a meeting for a collaboration here's me organizing the lookbook for this new f- you know what i mean like he was so open with showing you the behind the scenes of what's happening with the fashion industry and what it takes to be him you know you get i'd always love to go on his profile and check his stories because you get like literally millions you get little white dots and every dot would be a fucking crazy cool thing he's doing early samples of this you know working on a secret product all this sort of stuff man it's just we miss that um, you miss that fashion motivation we don't get it anymore no one does it because everyone's too cool virgil was virgil was generally cool because he, he didn't try to act too cool you know he was generally fucking cool so he was able to share the type of things with us nowadays everyone's too like prim and proper and don't want to sh- don't want to pretend like they're excited and they love what they do um but yeah r.i.p virgil man so anyway go back to this collection and finishing my palace sob story the collection is fucking fire everything about this is fucking hard the lookbook fucking kills the the things that i want that i would wear if i didn't have pride on ego <sighs> come on bro look at those bondage pants look at those bondage pants look at that fucking little teddy lanyard look at that tracksuit look at that look how fucking hard that is are you stupid like are you dumb do you know how hard that is a fucking palace and and vivian Westwood tracksuit that show jacket the pants the logo that looks like it might be 3m like oh my god and then the denim suit here and then you've got the full collection to check it out. Look, look at this stuff. Look how hard this stuff is. All of this stuff is so fucking good. I think it drops tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Is it tomorrow? Uh, when's it drop? It drops uh, launching in Europe. Oh, yes, tomorrow. It's tomorrow, actually. So it's, it's available tomorrow. Um, so try and, ch- try and buy it if you can. But I'm sure it's going to sell out. But look at this stuff. Look at how hard all of this shit is. Like, again, my hate for Palace to one side. Look at that flight jacket. Look at that flight jacket. Look at the bondage pants. Or the flight pants. Look at the look at that jacket. Look at that. Oh, the jacket also comes with a skirt. The Vivian Westwood um, Gore-Tex jacket. There's a skirt. There's matching pants to it. The denim. The denim is really amazing with the teddy bear motif all over it also. Oh, look at that. There's a hooded. There's a knitwear sweat. I thought they were going to use... I wanted to use another... It would have been sick. Whoops. It would have been sick if they used this as well. This is another print that Vivian Westwood uses. This is this is what I got for my Cambridge Satchel collaborations back in the day. But I would have loved it if they used this print also. This is one of my favorite. I'm, I'm not sure what this print is actually called. I'm not sure if it's barbed wire, whatever this print is. This is one of my favorite Vivian Westwood prints. I would have loved it if they used this as well in this collection. That would have worked fucking amazing. But that teddy bear that teddy bear fucking thing looks so fucking cool too look at that print that print looks so fucking beautiful the t-shirt with the tits on it looks hard with the trifeg whatever thingy thing look at it man the the jacket also comes with a gore-tex shooting hat oh this is gonna sell out so good look at this the harris tweed beret the teddy was that is that a bag oh nice the teddy bag there's a bowling bag, vest. This this is again will sell out really hard. I think the ear flap, all the accessories are gonna fly out the door, I'm assuming. Because all this stuff does well anyway, all this globe motif. I'm assuming Westwood probably sells this out by the truck. Oh, look at the wallets. Oh ho, 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 ho. so hard. The belts are a bit too gaudy for me. I wouldn't I probably would never wear stuff like this. But this wallet, look at the wallets, bro. Oh my god, again. If I didn't have any morals or principles, if I didn't have an ego, I'd be so much better off in life. If I didn't have pride, honestly, I could wear this sort of stuff with confidence, but I just can't. Every time I'd wear it, I'd just see that guy's face like, looking at me like a like some bozo. I couldn't do it, but the rings are really good. College ring, ring again. Earrings are pretty cool. You've got a nice decks here. You've got scarves, charm. It's all so fucking good. I honestly, I wish, I wish I was able to kind of bend over and spread my cheeks and allow those guys to fuck me, but I can't do it. I can't. I just can't with good conscience do it. But look at this flight jacket. It actually looks better in the other colors. I think there's a colorway in green. I think there's a green colorway. Look at the green colorway. Look at this. This this looks like Raph Simmons, bro. This could be Raph. You know what I mean? This could be fucking Raph. This is going to sell out for sure. Look at that. And again, I, I've got millions of, 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 you know, jackets and shit, but yeah. 
too hard, man. Too fucking hard. It also comes in black. Look at it. Yeah. So yeah, check it out. Palace Vivian Westwood dropping soon. Check it out. Check it out. You know where to check it out. You know where to check it out. 